Hey guys, happy Saturday. Oh my goodness. Drink. I don't have my um whatchamacallit thing today. So I'm trying to like adjust here as much as possible. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. I hope you guys are enjoying your weekend so far. I have been sick as a dog, so I actually got to sleep today. Feeling so much better. My voice is back a little bit, so I wanted to jump on and talk to you guys and see what you guys are up to and share some really powerful tips with you today for how you can start making some money in your business and how to stop blocking sales from taking place in your business. So let me just adjust this for a second. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's get started. Where are my notes? Okay, here we go. All right, guys, so if you don't have a pen and paper, I highly recommend you grab one because I want you guys to write down these tips, see which one, see which ones stick the most, which ones you need to work on the most, and which ones make you feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel uncomfortable. Sales feels uncomfortable for literally 9 out of 10 people, and I can't even count how many times I've jumped on a call with a client, and ultimately, when we clear through the crap that's keeping them stuck or where they're at, it usually boils down to sales. And I know for a fact, many of you guys have what it takes. You have the goods, you have the skills, you have the hustle, you don't mind working, you, you actually put in the work, but when it comes time to actually selling all of that, you shy away and you drop the ball. And it's not intentional, but there's a way to combat all this. So let's talk a little bit about the basis of sales, which is that you shouldn't feel like there's no integrity in your selling. Deep down, if what you have is a value, which you all have something of value, but I've seen too many times where people put out crap content and crap offers just to make a buck. If that's not you, then there is integrity to what you're offering and the problems that you want to solve. So it shouldn't feel sleazy. It should feel good to you. And I want you to keep in mind that the most successful salespeople are the ones that are persistent and the ones that are okay with dealing with rejection. Now, many times you think it's rejection, but it's not. It's what you're perceiving as rejection, but we're going to talk a little bit more about what it really is when people say no, okay? So I'm going to jump into the, to these seven tips. I want you to share with me which ones are kind of like a punch in your gut, which ones you need to stop doing right away, and which ones um, you kind of already knew, but it's maybe a little bit of a, rem a reminder for you. All right, so seven things that are killing your sales. The first one is you're selling stuff that people don't want. Now, we spend an awful lot of time, if you've ever worked with me one-on-one -on -one or in one of my programs, on really identifying who your audience is and what they want. And that really involves getting to know them, having conversations with them. It could be having them fill out a survey or just simply jumping on a video chat like this and talking to them one-on-one -on -one to see what they really want. Too often, especially newbie entrepreneurs, are putting out stuff that they think the world wants because it's something that they like or they perceive as important. But the truth is, if people don't want it, they're not going to buy it, no matter how great it is. If they feel like they don't need it, they're not going to purchase it. So make sure it's something people actually want. That's one thing that's killing your sales. And it's painful for me to watch because I see so many newbie entrepreneurs pouring their heart and soul into creating something. And it's like what I mentioned in the very beginning. It's not that you don't have what it takes. It's not that you're not willing to work hard. It's that maybe we just need to regroup on some strategies. And this is one of them. Make sure it's something people want. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is you're not selling your stuff. You're not putting out offers anywhere. I go to your Facebook page. There is not a single invitation to buy from you. I go to your Instagram. I go to your Twitter. I go to your website. And there's no offers. And you're not putting out any offers because you're scared of looking sleazy. You're scared nobody's going to click buy, nobody's going to comment, nobody's going to engage, and you're going to look stupid. But you don't need to worry about that because the truth is, if you don't put out an offer, you're not really giving anybody an opportunity to buy from you in the first place. And then you're sitting there feeling like you're failing as an entrepreneur, but the truth is, you're not offering anything. Put your offers out there, okay? Put your offers out there and give people the opportunity to purchase from you. 
Okay, the third one. The third one, I'm sorry, I'm still a little like congested here, so bear with me. The third one, don't say this anymore. Today is the last time you ever say this. I promise you, if you just eliminate this from your vocabulary and sales conversations, you will be much better off. You say, okay, let me know at the end of the sales conversation. When a person is saying no or now is at the time, whatever, you say, okay, let me know. Stop saying that. There is nothing to let you know. They don't need to let you know anything. You shouldn't let them let you know anything. You need to let them know, okay? You need to let them know. <laughs> if you honestly know you can help this person, if you honestly know this person needs what you have and that you could solve what their pains are, if you honestly know that you can give them value, do not say, let me know. Do not say, okay, let me know when is a better time. Do not say, okay, let me know when you have the money. Do not say, okay, let me know when you speak to your spouse. Hey, Kathleen, what's going on? Do not say, let me know. Eliminate that. Which brings me to number four, which is don't allow objections to scare you away. When a person is saying, I don't have the money, which is like the number one, right? That is not rejection. And you're taking it as rejection. You're taking it personally and you're getting scared of that and you're running away. You're getting scared of a phrase. I just want to let that sink in for a moment. You're getting, you're getting stuck and scared and running away from something somebody just responded with. They're just words. They're just words. And the truth is, it's scary for people to make an investment that they have no guarantee on. So you need to remember that instead of taking it personally and shying away from the sale. Now, we talked about what you're selling. If, if you, you should feel integrity in it because you should feel confident that it can provide value and a solution. So if that part is, if you're good with that part, then when a person gives you an objection, like I don't have the money, I need to talk to my spouse, now is not the time. When they say that to you, don't get scared and run away. All that person needs is for you to understand and continue the conversation and not give up on them. I'm not saying be annoying, okay? Um, when a person tells me, oh, I'm gonna pass, that's not enough information for me because I really wanna help you. So I wanna know, okay, in a non-sleazy, annoying way, I'm really sorry to hear that. Because I am sorry to hear that. I am sorry that, you know, you feel like you're not ready or you feel like maybe you don't have enough information. So I want to have the conversation with you. And you should want to have the conversation with them too. So whenever any kind of objection comes up, I want you to take a step back, take a second to think, put yourself in their shoes, and ask, I'm really sorry to hear that. Can I ask why? And don't do it coming from, if you don't do it coming from a place of, I just want to close this sale, which is what many people do and it skeeves me out. If you're really coming from a place of like, no, I really want to know why, what's going on. Like, maybe there's an option I can offer you to help, you know. I get it all the time, all the time. You know, I just can't afford this, okay. That means that you, if you really want to work with this person, there are other options you can offer them. And just say, hey, look. If you're really serious about wanting this change, if you're really serious about wanting this transformation, if you're really serious about wanting to work together, I don't want money to be the reason that you choose to opt out. And you can say that genuinely from a place. I mean, that's genuinely how I feel. When I know somebody really wants to work with me and money is the only reason, because it, sometimes it is a real reason, I've totally been there. If money really is the only reason, then if you allow me the opportunity to offer you some other options, then we can move forward and we both win, right? I get to help you, you know, you get to invest and help yourself and learn. So when somebody's giving you any kind of objection, don't run away and say, let me know, okay? Just give the conversation an opportunity. Most times people just need more information. Most times people don't even see the value in what you're selling. It's nothing personal. It could just be the way you're positioning it and they don't know what they're really gonna get out of it. So get comfortable with having uncomfortable conversations because they're only uncomfortable if you make them uncomfortable and if you look at them that way. And you won't make money like that. So 
people really want the genuine interaction. They want to know you really care. So if they can't afford it, don't just peace out. Have the conversation with them. Can I figure out a way for you to make this happen for yourself if you really want it? You know, if this is really something you want and money is the only thing coming in the way, then let's figure out how we can make this happen for you. I've done it many times for many times for clients. Okay, it's just it's sometimes it's a real situation for many people. It's not just that they don't want to pay you. So, you know, give them the benefit of the doubt. All right? That's that was 3 and 4. So 3 was don't say let me know and 4 was don't allow objections to scare you away. 5. 5 is a big money maker in my business and it's the follow up. Yes, Kathleen. Totally 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 and I think that those of us who have been there can sympathize with that right I mean I know that everybody out there tells us to just close the sale I know a lot of coaches are coaching us on how to make sure that we push them to buy but the truth is I've been there like I <clears throat> in the very beginning I had no idea how I was <clears throat> how I was gonna afford anything and it sucked because there was people I really wanted to work with, and there was programs I really wanted to purchase. Did I eventually figure out how to make it happen? Absolutely. But I had coaches who worked with me, you know, who were like, all right, how can we make this happen for you? And I appreciate that. So I do the same for the people that want to work with me. Okay. Number five, you don't follow up. This is a big money maker in my business. I can't tell you, nine out of ten times, the people that I end up working with me one-on-one -on -one or purchasing a program, they don't usually purchase the first time around. There's so much information out there that it takes a good deal of nurturing and kind of just proving that, you know, you can provide some sort of value. It takes time. So what I do is I like to go through my email every now and then, uh, my Instagram DMs, my Facebook private messages, and always just check in with the people that have reached out to me with an interest to work with me or with a question and just say, hey, last time we spoke about this, you know, you were struggling with that. How's it going? Um, maybe I'll shoot them a blog post that might help them or a live stream I just did. Just say, hey, look, I remember last time you reached out asking about this. I just did a live stream on that. I thought you might find it helpful. And if you want to take it a step further and maybe have a chat about it, we totally can if you're still interested. And that's it. It's a follow-up, a genuine follow-up. You could even call past clients. Call them and just see how they're doing. Okay? Just have genuine conversations where you reach out to people and follow up. Don't just leave the entire sale on the table because they said no one time. So the follow-up is important. That's number five. Number six. <sighs> number six has a lot to do with the live stream I did yesterday about social media. And number six is that your content doesn't really complement what you offer. So if I go to your page and you're posting about all this motivational stuff, but you do graphic design, then it's really confusing for me to want to work with you because you haven't posted any content that shows me you're the expert on design. If you're not posting content that allows me or eventually leads me to want to know more or to take that next step with you, then it's really difficult to sell your offer. How? Okay, you guys tell me, right? Perfect example. What's easier? If I do a live stream saying five Instagram tips to improve your bio, right? Let's say I do a live stream on that. I cover the five tips and I say, now, if you want to, now that your bio is in place, you want to get to 100,000 followers within the next month, click here, okay? That or if I'm posting motivational posts every day and then I come out with an offer that says, hey guys, grow your following to 100K by clicking here. But mind you, all I did was post motivational posts about you know, don't listen to negative people. Surround yourself with positive people. And I'm just posting stuff like that. I mean, it's great once in a while, but if it doesn't complement what you actually offer, then it's really difficult to sell your offer. When you post enough content that people love and it, it ties into what you sell, you will feel more confident selling. Sorry, I just got a call from somebody that I have not spoken to in like months. <laughs> anyways that ever happened to you like so random anyways uh, okay so back to what we were saying you will feel so confident in selling something when everybody gives you good responses on the content you put out that has everything to do with that offer and it might even allow you to see do people even really want this do people even really want this like nobody has shown interest in these posts maybe I shouldn't even put out this offer alright and the last one 
Number seven, ask for referrals. If you know people are so happy with your service, people have gotten results, ask them for referrals. Ask them for two or three referrals and then ask them, direct them for how to refer you. Oh, could you connect us via email? Could you connect us via Facebook Messenger? Or, oh, could you give them my card and then give me their info so I could follow up with them once I know who you've given the card to? Don't just say, hey, if you know anybody, can you let me know? Which is the big one for number three. No, when you ask for referrals, it needs to be specific and actionable. So you could say, hey, look, I have three cards here. Let's say it's a business card and you're a Facebook ad strategist for, I don't know, uh, dentist's offices and you help them get leads. You could say, look, I have three cards here. On the back, um, and I'd like to ask for maybe three referrals since you're so happy with the service. Can I write their names on these cards and take their like take their email? So once you give it to them, I will follow up to see if you've given it to them and then I will follow up with them. That is a more actionable way for you to guarantee three people are actually getting this referral card and you can reach out to them. We could go back to the other example. Can you connect us via email? That's actionable. You know that the person is connecting you via email or via Facebook Messenger, however else you want to do it. Just when you ask for referrals, don't just say, hey, uh, could you just let people know that you loved my service and if they need it, you know, just share this out. No, um, you're not going to do that. You could also offer some incentive like, hey, if you can get me three new clients, I will give you one session free or I will manage your next Facebook ad for at no cost. Okay, so you want actionable referrals. Make sure that it's actionable and it's strategic and it's you can place a value on it for how many people and by when you're going to follow up and it's measurable right so those are your seven tips guys Kathleen which one uh, do you feel is which which one do you feel like you took the away the most from I can't speak I'm still congested and I'm like kind of high off medicine a little bit yeah Totally, totally. That incentive for referrals works beautifully. I love it. It always works. It's, especially when I was in the wellness space, it always worked for me. Especially with the business cards and writing the name on the back and like, okay, who are the three you're going to give it to so I can call them. And it just allows you to take more action versus just sitting and waiting for clients to fall on your lap, which is something a lot of people do. So let's take these seven tips. Let's implement them this upcoming week. Write them down. And if you guys have questions, content on social media, I'm working on getting better. I saw that. I saw that you're starting. I saw that. I was so proud of you yesterday when you posted what you do and you just put it out there into the world and you were super fearless. Well, not fearless. You might have been a little fearful, but you did it anyway. So I just want to congratulate you on that because moving forward, progress, not perfection. And now people saw that post and they know what you do. And it's going to stick out in their mind now. So yeah, high five for you. Virtual high five. All right, so I'm out of here. I have to, I've been, what I've been doing all day today is just learning. I took today to just learn. I'm at my mom's house, so I'm not distracted with the children right now. I'm just learning. And I'm writing down everything that I need to be implementing this week. So if you guys want to set aside a day to just do that for yourself, I highly recommend it. It's so powerful. I have my planner, my brain dump notebook, and then my notebook that this is actually leaning on where I just write down the actual tips that I'm learning and then I put it into my planner for when I'm gonna do it. So I'm not walking away from these trainings like all motivated and informed and then hitting the refresh button, which is what I used to do. Good, Kathleen. All right, let's go back to studying, my friend. Let's go back to studying and learning. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend. I'm going to go see Beauty and the Beast tonight. If that's not on your agenda, guys, put it on there because that is actually my favorite Disney movie. So I'm really excited to go see that tonight. And I will let you guys know how it was, but I won't spoil it for you because I hate when people do that too. Have a great weekend, love. Stay busy, guys.